I have way too many cameras. I never have enough cameras. Okay, what's the best camera for bullet time in 2020? What I'm looking for exactly in that order is good image quality, absolute trigger precision, good price, small form factor, and availability. One of my favorite options is the SL1. It's the one right there. That's the smallest DSLR in the market, but it's an old one, so it's getting harder to find. I have nearly 200 of those, so all of my bullet time images with over 100 cameras are made with this one. So it still holds very well as of today. It's great because you can shoot 5K raw resolution, so you cannot beat that even with big cameras. It's kind of dirty. Am I talking too fast? But it's been replaced by the SL2 that is better, better sensor. It's 24 megapixels instead of 18, so that's great. And there's an even newer model, the SL3. So these two are very similar, very similar uh, sensors. Both are 24 megapixels, but the SL3 is drastically more accurate. In fact, that's the most accurate camera we've ever tested for bullet time. So this is the answer. If, like if you're starting from scratch today, go with this model. It's a great one. But what is making these, these three small cameras that good, that accurate? It's mostly the fact that they do mirror lockup. So mirror lockup is used mostly in astrophotography to make sure the camera is not shaking too much when you're taking the picture. But in our case with bullet time, it's just making everything more accurate. Okay, now another good option is the T5i, T6i, T7i. These are pretty much the same, just a bit more bulky, which doesn't matter that much for, for most people. It's a bit less expensive than the SL2, SL3, and it has mirror lockup, so it's going to be super accurate, same image quality, so that's a good option we have here. Not so much with these three right here, T5, T6, T7, they don't have mirror lockup. So they're not as accurate for the triggering. It's a, it's a bit shaky uh, when you're using those with continuous light. But there are workarounds. You can use the tolerance slider and smooth out your triggering and X angles. So that, that is an option. You can also delay the flash but it's the same image quality, more or less, as the others, so there's not a big difference using those. But if you're going with higher than 24 cameras, I would highly recommend to avoid using those. So these, these are great for like six or 12 cameras at max, but for bigger setups, just go with the, the cameras that can do mirror lockup, like the T6i or the SL2 SL3. Now let's move on to like those new mirrorless cameras, they're super tiny. They look very interesting and actually we, we had the chance to test those recently and unfortunately they're not accurate for the triggering um, from the test that we did uh, at least. Maybe there is a way to, to improve that, I'm not sure yet, but I really wish that this one here, that's the M200, really wish that this one would be an option because it's super tiny and it's quite affordable. Look how tiny it is compared to the SL3. So not an option, except for the M6 Mark II. This one here is not more accurate than the others, but it has a trigger port. So that's the only camera on this table where you get better trigger precision using an, the analog trigger. So Esper trigger box, you pair that with M6 Mark II and it's way more accurate than triggering by USB. Maybe we'll find a workaround at some point, but for the moment, if you're going with the M6 Mark II, you'll need Esper trigger boxes. I have a bigger mirrorless camera on the table, the EOS R. 
Uh, actually, I have a pair of those, one and two. And we tested those and they are quite amazing. Like it's super accurate and we're happy about that because we know it's the future. We know this is where we're going, but we didn't know like, if one of the mirrors would be accurate. This one is good, okay? So probably we'll see eventually a smaller one that is accurate also. It's not really an option, of course, I know because it's just too expensive. Like for, for an equal budget, you prefer to get more cameras than better ones. So not an option, but it's working well. Last camera on the table, the G7X Mark III. Really, really like this one. It's so different from the others. It is a point and shoot and it's super small and it works well. What's so different about this one is that you can power up the camera and transfer data using the same cable. With all of the other cameras on the table, you need the USB cable and a power cable, power adapter. So it's getting quite expensive, but also just too many cables out around your rig. So it's, it's making, it's so much cleaner using this camera. Unfortunately, it is not accurate, so you'll not be able to freeze the subject using those, at the moment at least, but using interval, it's gonna be just perfect. So I'm trying to figure out which cable is going to work well. So I spoke with Canon and they said that uh, you can either power the camera or transfer data, not the two at the same time, but it works actually. I, I, I tried it and using the right cable, I have only one cable that works well. Also, we have two other uh, super cool advantages with this one. The monitor can flip up so you can see what you're doing with all of the cameras at the same time, it's quite cool. And also, as it's a point and shoot, the lens is built in and we can zoom in and out all of the lenses at the same time to the same distance using X angle. It's quite nice. Okay, now Canon started to remove the central pin for the flash triggering on some newer models. So we have the SL3 that has this problem and also the T7. So we didn't know what to do uh, the, when we saw that because Flash is very important with bullet time, depending on the way you're doing your stuff. But we found a workaround by using uh, this Godox device. So you need one unit only. It's under 100 bucks, so it's fine. And you put that device on one of the cameras, and then you put your normal tr flash trigger, either Profoto or whatever the uh, the brand you're using you put it on top of that and this is only sending the signal from the camera to your other trigger to your wireless flashes okay that's it for now